Hey guys, Nick here. Today we're going to talk about my tips and tricks for tanking in Star Trek Online. So to start off with, we're going to fly away. And I just want to mention the first thing, which I think is the number one for... If you ever going to tank in the game, your number one priority is to pick a commander command ship. So that is so that we can get the ability which at the commander level is Suppression Barrage 3. Suppression Barrage 3, on basically a global cooldown, is minus 50% outgoing damage to your target, which is incredible. If you're tanking, instead of having to take, say, 7 million damage in a minute, you could take 3.5. So you're going to need less healing, less defensives, you know, and less overall tankiness, which just really helps. So that's number one priority. And then we'll go to priority... Well, it's a priority two, but reason number two for running a commander command ship is turn the tide. So if you see here, turn the tide affects friends and self to self minus inspiration, so it takes your power away. But we have 100% all damage resistance rating for 15 seconds, plus 300% hull regenerate for 15 seconds to the team, no distance requirement. So you hit that, and it's basically a team wide healing cooldown which is very very valuable my tip number two is making sure we have attract fire and threatening stance on some ships don't have attract fire if you do pick like a unique ship to tank with but if we're tanking in say a ship like my fleet justy car command science cruiser we have attract fire and obviously we have our threatening stance Threat stand, th these are for our threat generation. Tanking is revolved around you. If you gain the threat, you're taking the damage for your team and they're not dying and you know, we're having a good day. So, yeah. good part about it is threat generation. Okay, so next tip I have, it's a bit harder to show off and I'm just, I'm just gonna talk about it quickly, is positioning. So, positioning is more just, you know, you wanna be in the middle of everything. If you've got a 10K radius, which is your max on your weapons, and that's all you've got, you put yourself directly in the middle and try and grab everything you can get. If you say you've got uh, predominantly everything on the left, we hang to the left. You've got things on the left, but some spawning on the right, try and you lurch yourself over. But that's a bit more of an advanced idea, but positioning is something to think about. You can't be tanking if you're standing 10 kilometers away. There's also a distance calculation in the threat mechanic so say you're only tanking one target you sit right on top of it because the closer you are the more threat you generate next little tip to tanking is we map our if you're tanking you only run fire at will so fire at will with our beams is generally the only way you'll go because cannons have a target limit beams do not so say it again Beams with then fire at will have no target limit, so it means you can t target or you can th generate threat on everything, unlike cannons, which is only a maximum of three. Then, with running fire at will, we need to make sure we have an extension trait. Extension traits for fire at will are from either entwined tactical matrices from our Gagarin from the Sea Store. We have redirecting arrays i'm not too sure if i have actually leveled it on this tune i have from i think it's called the tucker class miracle worker ship i'll just double check that one for you in the thing here tucker miracle worker tucker class at tier five we're gonna scroll down at tier five you get redirecting arrays redirecting arrays is quite a good tanking trait doesn't beat etm but is good because it is when you're taking damage, you receive more uptime on your fire at will. So it's good because for tanking, you're taking damage and it keeps your fire redirecting rays up. But for generic tanking, we use our entwined tactical matrices because we run a beam and a torpedo, which means we have better uptime on our fire at will. So moving on, I want to talk about two pieces of, of I wouldn't say gear. One's a trait and one's a console. First, I want to talk about Ion Storm. You can see I here, Ion Storm is 5% maximum hull, 15 shield hit points, so both good tanking stats. More hit, more health, more shields you have, the tanker you are, the, like, the more damage you have to take before you die, 
so it's good 500% threat generation so the more threat you generate the less you know, comparatively the others are doing the more chance you have of holding that targets threat into you so you're taking the damage instead of like a DPS player or a support player or someone who's new who doesn't have quite the build that you do and second of this I want to talk about is unified engineering so both of these come from the Baran I mentioned both of these because they're both excellent tanking pieces of equipment so here when activating ox to sif or oxtral auxiliary to structural so that is go in a minute or any commander bridge officer ability so command bridge officer ability counts our suppression barrage to team and cell for 15 seconds 10 hull cap 10 shield uh, recharge speed on bridge officer abilities 10 flight speed turn rate 10 flight speed and 50% hull regen so they're all very good stats about keeping your team alive so it's more cooldown reduction more hull more movement speed and more hull regen so it's very good so you've got someone who's doesn't have much hull regen but you just running this you're giving your team more tankiness so it's very good plus even on its own for yourself is quite a good little trait and this comes from, both of these come from the brand and say you're first time tanking I'd recommend you pick up the brand because that would give you this is a tank platform because we see it's a command dreadnought cruiser which means it can run suppression barrage tree it has turned the tide it can run fire at will it can also run gravity well one it has unified engineering and it also has the ion storm generator so each part of the ship is very good as a tanking ship so highly recommend that ship if you are looking at it getting into tanking have a look at the brand for its equipment and potentially the ship itself all right next piece of things we're going to look at is the discovery two piece so for warp core and shields i'd recommend no others other than the our mycelial harmonic matter antimatter core and our tilly's Re Re Tilly's review pending modified shield. Sorry, there's a bit of a tongue twister for me. I am it, this uh, yet again. I've been starting at 5 a.m. all week, so beginning up about 4 a.m. all week. It's currently almost 5 p.m. here in Australia, so I'm uh, been up quite a while and without much sleep. So I'm uh, yeah I'm a little off. But well, look here. Our for our, for tanking, we run the two here. We're on two and we run three, but predominantly two for a for a tanking is plus 120 percent hull regeneration so we, yeah if you're at 100 percent and you have 100k health you're running you're regening 100,000 hit points say a minute or a, so with 220 percent you're regening 220k so it's quite a large increase to your health regen or your hull regen so for tanking it's great and then the three piece is just extra threat generation each time you attack a target there is a lightning bolt will come out of your ship for a direct amount of damage it'll depend on your build your ship your endeavors but the big part of it is a scaling on maximum hull so for tanking you're all about more hull so the more hull you have the more damage this does the more it helps you get threat on those targets so all across the board are all very good pieces of gear for tanking next piece I want to talk about is what I would like to say is our O bleep heal or our, our defensive console as a heal so the number one defensive console heal is the DPRM or the dynamic power redistributor module so if we look here it's 40% bonus damage which we're not going to talk about today is a hundred percent bonus damage resistance damage resistance rating the bonus part of that means if we come over here, I'll hit it for you. Well, I have 48% resting hull, hull resistance or damage resistance. We hit DPRM, I'm at 74. So that's a plus almost 30, say 25 to 27% resistance rating for hitting this console. And the adaptive emergencies in a similar boat, plus 50. So we hit that again. Boom. That's, see, that was only five, but it shows these consoles add a lot to damage resistance and make you a lot more tanky another defensive cooldown that is commonly used is the overloaded sif linkage if you see here to teammates within 10 kilometers 50 hull regen reduces the damage they take to self you get 100 to 200 percent bonus all damage resistance rating 
plus 50 hull regen, and then it, after, I think you take 50% of the prevented damage as radiation hit to you, so it's a little bit more of a dangerous one, but it's quite good as a team defensive, so if your team is dying, it's quite a good def team cooldown. Another one we have is our Protomatter Field Projector. It's just a standardized, while active, all allies within three kilometers gain. It's around 300% shield re regeneration and 300% hull regeneration. This is generally my last choice is because, say you're taking a hell of a lot of damage, it doesn't have a, def a hull or it doesn't have a resistance rating increase. So you're still gonna take the same amount of damage, you just have more regen, whereas all of the others have a resistance rating increase built in. So you start to take less damage and then you heal more as my preference. But if this is the only defensive cooldown, defensive cooldown console you have, I would highly recommend you run it because having one is better than having none. Next, I would wanna talk about, which this is in no particular order, I wanna talk about history rule remember. It's probably with the ETM, our number one and number two best in slot trades for tanking because of this. The, the, the stats above are very nice, plus damage, plus hull regen, plus hull, very nice, but the big part about this is once it's at 30 stacks, it's 300% threat generation. So then again, more threat generation, the easier it is for you to grab the target, you know, being targeted by certain allies or enemies, which means your teammates are not. So it's a huge part about tanking this trait is very good. Now I'm going to talk about, I'd say more of minor things I would look at, but they're still very, you know, very helpful when, you know, building out a good high-end tank. So would be, I want to talk about, this part will be bowels. Bowel anti-proton beam arrays. These weapons are probably the number one tank weapons to use because of the refraction. If we look down below, we have barrel reflection, each shot chained to additional target for 5% of the damage. What this means is you hit one target, it chains to another, and another, and another, continually, and that, each shot gets you aggro. So you shoot a target, and your damage starts spreading in a larger radius than 10 kilometers. So it just gets you threat quicker than any other weapon can. And there's other parts of the damage and then also the refraction with the two piece we have more refraction 100 percent refraction still more damage and i think they refract even more with the two piece so they are the best in slot tank weapons so if you want to build a tank out like mine and you don't have a set 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 of weapons you want you like to use have a look at bubble anti-proton beam arrays for your tank so next i want to talk about is a duty officer it's good if you have it, and if you don't have anything else you want to run, is Agent Neural. Agent Neural, when under attack pattern beta, each weapon fired restores 0.2% of your max hull. So as a tank, if you have 200, 300,000 hull, I don't want to do the math on that, but you know, each weapon fires 0.2%, so it was 200,000, 1%, it's 2,000. So if it's a couple hundred a shot, sure, it's not a lot, but if you're constantly getting hit, if you're getting a thousand HP per weapon fight or 500, you know, it, it helps f fill in little gaps here and there. Um, another one, say your first time tanking, is a, just a console I'd recommend for just a little while, maybe just to get your feet wet, is hull image refractors. So 20% all damage, incoming heals exceed maximum hull instead. instead. Oh, sorry. Incoming heals exceeding maximum hull. Instead, apply temporary hit points for 30 seconds. So, this basically is saying is instead of a hull heal, if you're at 100, if you hit a hull heal, instead of it doing nothing, it will go into temporary hull. So, sitting here, my ship's at 179,000 hull. If I was sitting here spamming a heal, I would go up to 360,000 or 350. Eight or fifty-nine thousand, and sorry, we'll just round up the three hundred and sixty thousand hull. So you can see your hull is getting doubled. Resistance rating, I think, is at zero on temporary hull. Someone can correct me down below in the comments if I'm wrong, but it's just a cheap console to get you a lot of hull, like a HP pool sponge. And last, I want to talk about is RSP. I I say RSP. Is it acronym? 
I would say uh, an acronym for reverse shield polarity. So look, we're immune to teleport, immune to shield drain, and then as a two, when taking damage, don't know if you can hear my phone going off. I will mute that quickly. I'm very sorry. I thought that was. When taking damage to any shield facing, heal 72% of that damage to the shield facing for 16 seconds. So what that's saying is, as you're getting wailed on, you're going to heal 72% of the damage you're taking to your shields back into them. And at a rank 3 level, it's at 86%. So this is quite a good if you're looking for that extra little bit of defensiveness. You've got reverse shield polarity, which is quite a good a little cooldown. It's, it's a bit of a longer CD, so you just make sure you time it, or you can run uh, DOFs, duty officers, that extend, sorry, decrease its duration, so you can have it up a lot more, but you know, that's generally after everything else I've mentioned. You know, I've started not, I wouldn't say I started not running, I generally don't run it anymore because Suppression Barrage is kind of taken its place as the commander level tank ability. And then everything else passively just keeps me up very well. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, that is my tanking tips and tricks. Sorry, there's a few misspoke speaks here, as probably always a few more today. I just, yeah, it's been a bit of a long day. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.